So let's begin by talking about corruption. This was one of the key issues during the election and naturally a major talking point during yesterday's press encounter. In one of his answers, President Ekufadu stated his resolve to tackle the menace head on since he sees it as a crime and not an avenue for political persecution. But in the run up to the presidential press encounter, we took the views of some persons in the anti-corruption space who believe from the onset government strategy in fighting corruption is focused on only one aspect of a multifaceted problem. So the president has said his piece, but were his answers enough? We'll be discussing this, and these are the questions that we will be asking our experts when we are joining the discussion. But let's begin by hearing what the president himself had to say about corruption at the media encounter yesterday. When the time comes for them, to find their area in the form of prosecutions. It's my expectation is that there will not be flimsy cases. They will not be about an attempt to witch hunt members of the last government. I'm not going to lend myself to that exercise. We're going to bring cases, and there will be cases. There are several in the pipeline that I'm aware of, but cases that will make it clear to the courts and also to public opinion that yes, something wrong took place there, which requires the intervention of the courts. Um, I will, I, I, the, uh, the special prosecutor, when he comes, will help. But the, the already instruments for enforcing the criminal law, which are already in place, so it cannot be a question of waiting for the special prosecutor. It's a question of making sure that whatever is brought into the public domain as cases are thoroughly well researched, well documented, and that they are strong cases and not just flimsy exercise playing to the gallery. Now we have on the line the head of Joy News' political desk, Evans Mensa, who was at the presidential press encounter yesterday. Evans, if you can hear me, before we begin to talk about corruption specifically, what was your impression of yesterday's event as a whole? Well, I think um, based on my past experiences of of this of these events, yesterday, I guess, having learned lessons from the past, was an improvement over over what we've seen uh, since President Kufuor's time. Honestly, um, first of all, the um, I guess one of the things that struck me last year, for example, we were deprived of our uh, of our phones and iPads and electronic gadgets. And as journalists, um, you use these, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a tool, really. And so without it, it was difficult. That, for example, this time we're allowed to go in with your phones and with your iPads. Uh, that was helpful. But also, um, other thing that I noticed that has been a feature of past presidential press conferences was the uh, um, invitation extended by the organizers to a party foot soldiers and sycophants who come to the event and they clap and they, they cheer on the president, etc. when you hold the press conference with journalists who are supposed to be scrutinizing uh, the president. Then you hear them clapping for the president, etc. Yesterday, um, I must say that there was one incident where the president altered uh, some words that led to clapping in a certain section among where the journalists were supposed to be seated. Uh, and that, for me, was, was, was a slight block, was a slight fly in the ointment yesterday. Uh, mm. But in terms of the frequency of that, the magnitude of that, and, and what we've seen, it, it was, it was a, a milder version of what we've seen in the past, all the way from President Kipur's time to uh, President Mills to John, John Mahan. To now, we've seen that. And my hope is that next time we have this, it should be zero secret mm. funds, zero party foot soldiers invited. I think it's absolutely wrong for you to have journalists that interrogate interrogating the president for them to be clapping. You have no business to fight for the president. You have to interrogate him. Mm. Uh, and, and so overall, the president tried to answer the question. And if you ask me to read the president's answers, I will give him a, a seven, a, between 6.5 and a 7 over 10. Why? Why? Because there were, there were, there were some of the questions that um, he, um, well, let's say he evaded some of the questions. He, he answered some of them honestly. Give us an uh, example of, of him evading a question. 
so for example, the, the question that was thrown uh, to him, for example, on uh, the and and this one is one of the ones that he, uh, you know, deflected to Dr. Palmia. Yeah, I think but another question on the on the on on the loan accumulation and its impact on the economy, etc. Well, Dr. Palmia answered that, but mm. I didn't quite get a get an answer. Honestly, I mean, I I, I was left more confused than going in to that particular answer, uh, that particular question and the answer. That That's one of them. The president himself, when it came to the uh, issue, you know, of... Um, and if, if, you, if you followed his, um, his initial... Um, the, the opening remarks that he gave, for example, on the question of uh, the boss matter, if you, that initial comment that he had, Essentially saying, well, the investigations are going on, and that you know we wait for the investigations to be done. But we know that investigations by the BNI is already done, and so that for me was was facing it and hoping that it doesn't come up again with the follow up scrutiny because you know if you scrutinize what he had said there, mm. you find you, you might find a bit more uh, substance that he didn't want to touch on. And so yeah, those those two. Uh, and it, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you if if, if you look through the tweet, you find areas and where you know people ask questions that he tell we didn't get answers to. Right. And I get that before. Right now, Evans. Uh we just played a clip of what the president said about corruption. That section, I'm sure you remember, when he was saying it's not about waiting for an independent special prosecutor to be appointed, but to begin the process of, you know, making sure that the, the country is corruption-free as it is now. On that bit, and also on other things he said about corruption in particular, are you satisfied with the answers he gave? Well, on corruption, I mean, the president has been consistently... Um, Anytime you ask about corruption, he refers you to the to the breaching of the um, of the uh, the, the office of the independent special prosecutor. Yeah, prosecutor. I mean, he, he he points you to that. But also, there's something he said yesterday that sounded eerily similar to what we've heard all the presidents before him say when it comes to corruption. It's as if they have the same script, which is. Any time corruption allegations have come up and the president has been pressured, any president, and then this is in the report, and the president to do something about corruption, the president says, give me the evidence, and I'll process it. The president repeated that line yesterday. Now, oh, yeah, I need the evidence, you know, and uh, if I don't find the evidence, you know, if it's about the corruption, the other thing. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, a politically correct thing to say, right? But, um, yeah, I need the evidence to tell but I think there's a bit of convenience to it, too. Because if an allegation is, is level, it is the president's duty as a commander-in-chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, as, as, as the as executive president, to quote investigations into those allegations. So at any time I've heard the president say from Kupo said it, um, when he was challenged about corruption in his own government, that's where the corruption is. He's not going to take me to allegations. Uh, mm. President Mill said it. John Mahama said, another Dr. Kufa said, there must be something there that politicians find very convenient to run to in pointing to that, mm. without necessarily telling us what they are doing to investigate those allegations. Then I, I, I just think we must go beyond that. Mm. Um, and that, for me, I guess, was the point where I felt he could have done better. It's okay to okay. refer to the independent public prosecutor because, yes, yeah, it's, it's a good mechanism to fight corruption. But don't tell that, um, oh, um, there's no evidence and I want evidence without telling me mm. that I'm committing myself to find the evidence and to investigate. As, 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 especially when you have um, authority over the, the IGP, which is the, the head of the police, the agency. Yeah. In yeah, charge of finding goal. evidence. So, exactly. yeah, exactly. Evans, Evans, let, let me hold, hold that thought for me. Let me come back into the studio, but you're still a big part of the discussion. Ma ma I've been joined, uh, like I said, by a member of the Ghana Anti Corruption Coalition, um, and we'll, we'll be looking at this issue of corruption for the first uh, few minutes of the show. Emma, welcome. Um,
what the president said, of course, has to be taken in the context of what we know to be done on the ground as, as a nation. And, and we want to look at if you are satisfied with what you have heard vis-a-vis -vis what has been done in the past six months. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I use this opportunity to um, greet the viewers. Um, I want to just take us back um, a few years back where we have had presidents um, committing or talking about corruption and how they intend to fight corruption. Um, we've heard about probity and accountability and we know how far it went. We also heard about zero tolerance to corruption and we know how far that one also went. But the um, good thing for us last year is that uh, this current president uh, won the election with one key message, fighting corruption. So as a coalition, our expectation was really high. In fact, we were seriously looking for a change. And we were also hoping for business unusual because we expected that it is no more going to be rhetorics. It is going to be full commitment and full implementation of whatever campaign promises has been made. But looking over the few uh, months of the president's uh, being in office, um, I would want to commend him for some few things that he has brought on board. Uh, for instance, this is the first time that uh, Shraj, as um, an, um, an in organization, has received increased funding. And then this is also the first time we have also seen uh, dedicated funding to the 10-year National Anti-Corruption Action Plan, which is NACAP. So, but I am also quick to add that um, in terms of budgetary allocations are not necessarily disbursements. Uh, what it means is that uh, we can't even know um, if whatever was committed will be disbursed mm. at the end of the year. But for now, we have seen an increase, and we are hoping that it is also complemented with disbursement. But looking at the issues that have confronted this government the few years in terms of anti, I mean, corruption uh, between uh, May and June, there mm. were serious issues that have come up. Um, I'm referring to the Ghana Revenue Authority issue. I'm referring to the Ghana Standards Authority issue. Mm. Um, and the last one, which is the BOST issue. Unfortunately, we have also not seen that uh, responsiveness of government in addressing these issues. Um, that With the BOST, we are being told that mm. investigations are being carried out. The BNI has brought out yes, its actually, findings. I'm actually going to talk about that. You see, uh, in the past, we have had committees set up. Uh, we've had um, issues, uh, I mean, ministers, um, transfer from one portfolio to the mm -hmm. other and all that. But this time we're looking at how responsive the president can be on such issues. For instance, the BOST issue. It is so disheartening uh, in the midst of when a committee is being set up to investigate an issue, then you have BNI National Security come up to talk about the same issue that a committee is going to talk about. What it means is that uh, already uh, you are interfering with the investigation that the independent committee or the committee is supposed to. And we have, actually our position is that we should have an independent committee investigate this issue. And the other disheartening point I want to draw attention to is when the minister comes out to say in terms of the politics of equalization, which we're hoping will not happen under this current president, you know, referring to what the NDC had done and uh, the quantum in terms of, you know, what they have done. So once it has been done in the past, then um, what they are doing uh, currently, you know, it's is, in line, it, it's in line with um, uh, precedence or however you put it. But my point is, wrong is wrong. We, Ghana, we have rules, we have laws. So the fact that somebody broke the rules and it is not 
uh, address doesn't mean that it should continue. Mm. So that was what we were hoping that the president should be able to address. And I think that if, if he was able to do that, it will even send a strong signal to his own um, appointees to know that he is actually walking the talk and is not only talking. Because the moment you know as a political appointee that whatever you do, the president will not tolerate it, regardless of you know, precedence or whatever. Once it's wrong, he's going to apply the rule of law to address the issue. I believe that it will even be a wake-up call to all his ministers. Mm. And I think that will help us because we are only a few months into his, 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 few months into his new administration. And he needs to communicate that strong message to his appointees that whatever campaign message I made, whatever promises I made last year, I mean it and I mean business. And it's no more business mm. as usual. OK, now um, what do you make of this uh, issue that Evans brought up earlier about him saying that, look, I need the evidence before I can move. What, what do you make of that? You see, that, that is one of the sad aspects of this whole issue, is that uh, we had um, called for independent investigation into the matter. Now, invest, uh, committee to investigate the matter, which is also part of evidence gathering. So if you need evidence, what have you put in place to be able to get that evidence. So once we have an independent, especially where we are dealing with an issue that has occurred in the previous administration, then we need an independent investigation into the, the matter. Because one, corruption in this country is a crime, regardless of the timeline. It doesn't matter when you committed the crime, it is still a crime mm. and it can be punished. So if it was done this year and it, is, it was done in the past, whoever was found culpable mm. can be punished. So for me, the president has the opportunity to say, look, I need independent investigation to, uh, to this so that people who committed crime in the past and who have committed presently can both be brought to book. Mm. And then that will be a good message for Ghanaians to know that indeed the president meant business. So in summary, we need to see more action. We need to exactly. see more prosecution. Exactly. And we mm. also need transparency about whatever the president is doing. For instance, if the president says that uh, I am working on it and you will hear about it soon, mm. let's know exactly what you are working on mm. so that it warms our hearts to know. And if it's, uh, we need to be make input into what the president is working on, then we could also make our input into it. So it is mm. good for the president to make some of these things public, mm. especially when it has to do with uh, people who have um, been out of this previous, mm. uh, I mean, past administrations who are part of it. We should make it so transparent that when people are being punished, nobody sees it as, as a, a political, political targeting. Exactly. Yeah, uh, Evans, uh, now Evans is still with us on the line. Evans, uh, that was a point that was raised yesterday, and we've already touched on a question you asked when it came to the bust issue. That is a big part of the corruption discussion in this administration. Are you satisfied with that answer? And do you feel that um, that reaction of the minister when he began talking about precedent was, you know, a way of usual political equalization? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the president's answer, uh, the president chose to go to, to bring in the law. So he says, well, um, the MD did nothing wrong. And in essence, endorsing the BNI investigation, the outcome of the investigation, they, they, he did no wrong because um, they, they, they deal, the deal, dealing in contaminated fall is an unregulated aspect of, of, the, of the downstream sector. And, and so, you know, and, and for me, that, that was very difficult to accept. Why? Because the MD, uh, the MDA was categorical, and quoted the law that backed their point that this was illegal and it violated the law. And top lawyers in this country disagree with the president's position, disagree with, with the suggestion that it's an unregulated area. Asa Kuma is one of them. And, and, and for the president to, to endorse the BNI position, when the... the the, the minister he appointed has set up a committee that is yet to gather its first evidence. Was uh, was I guess spoke volumes about 
about the way this issue mm. uh, has been handled. And, and some may, and rightly so, suggest that his comment yesterday will we'll tend to, um, you know, so prejudge the outcome of the investigations that the committee is going to, is going to undertake. The president already had endorsed the committee investigations by the BNI. The, the, the guy did nothing wrong. There was nothing absolutely wrong with it. And so, for me, that, that, was, that was one of the, uh, I guess, challenges with his answer. Mm. Right. Um, Evans, uh, we'll take your final words in a moment, but let me begin with uh, Madame Mefa um, on, finally, what, what do you think in a nutshell are we looking forward to? I mean, the next six months, if we should have this again, what would you expect to hear? I'm expecting more from the president. I'm expecting that all the commitment he made should be seen. And um, I, I actually uh, feel that as somebody who is a legal person, who has legal expertise and knows what it is, like when uh, for instance, if a case is in court, you don't um, go into the details of it. So you can set up a committee and then have the issue, you know, part of the issue being already uh, finalized, kind of. So for me, I think that these are mm. things that we need the president to understand, that as a nation, we don't accept mm. some of these things. We want to have complete and holistic uh, approach to fighting corruption. Okay. It shouldn't be um, in a rush to like uh, bring some parts of evidence. We don't need isolated evidence. We want, if you are bringing up an evidence, it should be a holistic evidence. It should be that evidence. That will bring closure to the matter. Exactly. Mm. So that we will all be at the same level. But as it is now, there are doubts being cast. There are issues of credibility. And, and I think that it is not mm. in favor of the president. So I would want the president to walk the talk, to go back to his campaign promises and, and make sure that the next time we are meeting him, we'll have more substance to deal with, substance that is credible for us to see as a nation, to believe that, yes, this matter has been brought to a closure. Mm. And even if nobody is found culpable of the law, the issue has been dealt with independently and transparently. Mm. I think that will go and boost uh, his um, government as a government who has done things differently from the okay. previous government. Thank you very much. Evans, let's take um, your final words in a minute. Well, I, 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 I believe, um, well, the president has promised that we're going to have another one um, in December. Um, and I've already said, I, in December, I don't want to see the party, party uh, foot soldiers and, and take up on at the, at the event should be only restricted to journalists. And, um, and on, on corruption, thankfully by December, Parliament would have passed the independent prosecutors, uh, you, know, you know, bill into, into law. And we should see, then we can judge properly uh, what, what sort of fight as far as corruption is mm. concerned. Right. Thank you very much, Evans Mensa, for joining us. He's an editor here at Joy News. He's the head of the political desk. And Madame MFA Beauty Nate is also a member of the Ghana Anti-Corruption Coalition. Thanks, ma'am, for your time.